Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I wanted to talk with you a little bit about my personal collection of everyday carry gear. We'll show, I'll show off the, the, the knives, the watches, the pens, uh, and uh, the, the multi-tools that I've got in my collection here, and I'll uh, talk a little bit about which, uh, you know, why they are in my collection. And actually, it's worth noting, I refilmed, this is a refilm video, it's mid-September 2020. I filmed one of these guys in late August, but I never loved it. It wasn't my best work, it was. So what I'm, I'm going to do today is take a different tack and talk about not just that something is in my collection, but why? Why does this stick around? What's interesting to me about it? And that'll give me some chances to tell some stories, etc. And uh, also, it'll help me identify some things that might go up for sale via Patreon at some point in time here soon. So anyways, um, there is that. Let's go on ahead and jump into it. But actually, before I do a couple of quick preambles, people are going to ask, well, Nick, what, what are these cases that this is in? Where did you get all this? Well, these are actually, uh, these cases are from Gerstner International. So Gerstner is an American brand, but they've got this international line. Line, um, uh, of cases that are really, really nice. Honestly, I picked these guys up on Craigslist of all places. Um, and, and uh, but uh, nonetheless, they offer some very, very nice storage for everyday carry. Uh, and of course, some of the stuff lives in the safe. But I brought it out into this case here for um, uh, for the purpose of this video. Um, next big question is: Well, Nick, hold on, wait a second. Oh my God, you? Why? Where is the Spyderco Delica? Where is the Spyderco PM2, etc.? I have a whole separate video talking about pieces that are kind of around most for comparison. They're points of reference, but they're not necessarily something I'm going to carry on a regular basis. And so some of the stuff that you might see show up on the channel regularly might not be here, and I'll link to that video down in the description. Then finally, a bunch of people, oh my god, Nick, you said that X was a gem. And X, of course, being a particular knife. Why isn't it here? Well, remember that this is my personal collection. These are the things that jump out to me, that talk to my heart for some reason, and that's very different than something being amazing. There are lots of amazing pieces that, frankly, I wish I could have in my collection, but I I can't just, not because, you know, I, I couldn't, but because if I did, I, my collection would be four times the size, right? So I try to really keep things a little bit limited, he says, about to show you a ridiculous amount of gear. But anyways, today we're going to talk about the watches, pens, flashlights, and pocket knives that are in my everyday carry collection here, and I'll just jump into it. So um, we'll go on ahead and get started, and these are in no order at all, really. These are in the order I'm taking them out of the case, uh, out, out of this thing. So um, actually, the first one I'm grabbing is is this guy right here. This is a newer addition to my collection. This is the Herman Knives Vespatilio, and it has a Timascus backspacer as well as this inlay here. Um, it is a Herman knife, and Herman is a company that I, I really like. Their stuff is great. Well, the, his stuff is great. Um, the, just, but the the uh, this is a smaller size than any of the other ones out there, and I just, I really like the style. I really like, it's got almost a Batarang look to it, doesn't it? Um, so I like this piece a lot, and actually I have a couple of other Hermans around, I've got the, uh, the this uh, Sting, which is sort of his mid-size model, um, and this was actually the one from review originally, and then I have down in a lower drawer here the Dragonfly, which is gigantic, um, unlike a dragonfly that you are used to in this daily life, but it's it's yet another really nice piece. The Sting and the Dragonfly are being kept around mostly for the review of the um, the, of the, 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 the Vespatilio, uh, but I don't know that they're going to... This thing might stick around, but the Dragonfly will probably go down the road at some point just because it's a little big for me to carry on a regular basis. So the Vespatilio is just a beautifully machined object, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I really like this. It's got a great little size, great action. Um, the, this is... Uh, the review hasn't gone live on it. Actually, review isn't filmed yet, but it's definitely coming, and it's definitely great. Next one is the Spydeco Shaman. This is a weird version. This is an M4 uh, steel. Uh, so this was one of the Blade HQ exclusives that shipped with the uh, the, the Baby Puke Jade Scales. Uh, and uh, to be fair, I don't actually know what Baby Puke looks like. Uh, but anyways, uh, the, 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 but I put some wood scales on this. Well, fake wood, pack of wood, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so, uh, because a viewer wanted to trade the jade for that, or uh, the, well, one I died for that, and you know what? That sounded great to me. The Shaman sticks around because it's a great little piece. Um, well, it's a great bigger piece. It's a nice hard to use knife, but it's not so, like, completely overbuilt to be ridiculous. Um, it, it's quite, quite good. Um, and actually, its position is only threatened by this knife, which is a very new addition to the collection. This is the Demco Knives AD20. This knife is amazing. This is a, a new for 2020 knife. It features the Shock Lock, uh, which is unusual, but I didn't expect that this guy would stick around in my collection. I didn't even think I was going to like this thing, but it really is great. Not only does it have an incredible fidgety action here, 
It is just amazing, but more importantly, um, it is a really cool, really big, beefy, uh, overbuilt sort of knife. This is my token, oh my god, this thing is ridiculously overbuilt knife, actually replacing the Cold Steel 8015. And so in a lot of ways, if I'm doing something crazy uh, where I might have grabbed the Shaman before, I might grab this guy, but I like the Shaman enough as, because it's a, this is a great knife, but in terms of like, if I wanted to do really fine cutting, this is a little less compared to the Shaman. This is kind of a good middle ground. I think it's beatery enough for most of my life, but I've got this now, so that gets a little bit of intermediate work. This is the CRKT Titanium Home Front. This is a, 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 probably the best knife Cricket's ever made, in my estimation. Um, it is a home front knife, but it is a frame lock, and it is a, uh, it's full titanium, it's M390, etc. I like this knife a lot for a bunch of reasons. To start with, it's uh, it runs great. It's got a nice action to it, um, and as I've used it more, it just gets better. It's using the field strip technology that lets you take the guy apart very, very easily, um, which doesn't come up that often, but still. And frankly, I like... Uh, it's a great sign. I love seeing Cricket go towards the higher end there. And so having that guy around, it's, it's a very nice little pocket knife, and, uh, you know, it's just... It's a cool little bit of technology. I I respect the designer, by the way. Uh, this is a Ken Onion design. I, I respect Ken Onion a great deal as well, and so having one of his designs in my collection, actually, I think that's the only Onion I've got around, um, that's a great thing. I already showed you the 8020, so I'll show you this guy instead. This is a weird knife. This is a Winter, uh, Winter Blade Company Factor. Um, and more specifically, this isn't actually a Factor. This is an early prototype of the Factor with an entirely different lock design. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but this particular piece is absolutely gorgeous. It's not perfect. It's not ready for production. And he said that, you know, by the time he, he finished it, uh, that, that this one wasn't going to be saleable. And so he sort of donated because apparently my channel was an inspiration. But I also have uh, a, uh, a full production factor. Well, not production, but one of his uh, newest version custom factors. This is a weird knife. This is a knife that is a magnetic frame lock. It has a frame lock, but everything is done with magnets. The detent is magnetic. This little button here, the, the deploy it, this is one of the stranger knives I've frankly experienced, um, especially when I'm trying to hold it up on camera. But it is really compelling. And in fact, it's so compelling that I've ordered a full dress one of these guys from the guy just because it's like, wow. This is cool. So, um, yeah, there, there's that guy. Um, it, those are both joys, and I just, I, I do like the look of this, and the Timascus here is quite nice. Um, they, then there's this guy. The Holt Knives custom, well, not custom, but uh, it's a bolster lock Spectre uh, with a Damasteel blade and Damasteel handles and a Damasteel clip. This thing's freaking beautiful, is what this is. Um, that's the reason this sticks around. Um, uh, you know, the fact this sticks around because it's unique, because it's weird, this sticks around because it's just gorgeous. Um, I, I really, it's, it's bougie, absolutely 100%. It's a little ridiculous, they're hard to get, but at the same time, I look at this and I'm just like, wow, that's an object. Um, and so it's, it is an absolutely beautiful object, and it's one that sticks around on that merit alone. It's a piece of knife-making art, even though it's in the CNC tradition, it is quite good. And actually, that brings us to another piece, which is the pro Protech Sprint here. This is the ultimate custom edition Sprint, um, and Protec actually engraved it with my gem logo without my knowledge, um, which just makes it all the more, uh, well, had it engraved. This is a uh, Bruce Shaw engraving, but makes it all the more uh, amazing. Um, this is a knife that I am, you know, it's ridiculous, but it's a great formal knife. Um, not only is it just a beautiful piece of, again, object, um, but it is an amazing thing to just throw in your suit pocket or something like that. So on a very formal day, that's probably what I'll grab there. Um, this is uh, another relatively high-end piece. This is the um, Penny Knives Front Flipper Trapper. This is the custom version, um, not the uh, Rayot production version. So it's a liner lock instead of a frame lock, etc. And it has an amazing action. Um, it has a very, very nice deploy, and uh, it is handmade. Uh, it's made by Enrique Penny, and it is pretty much perfect. In fact, I would argue it is perfect. Um, this is a beautiful example of what a custom knife maker can actually do, and it reminds me of that on a, on a regular basis. It's like this is, that, uh, that, that is, the, the Pena is sort of my only custom, custom knife. Um, I've got some knives that have been customized. I've got some unique pieces, but that one, that's a custom. Um, and so I think as a reviewer, it's nice to have a custom around, right, as a comparison. And I think Pena is a 
good guy, generally speaking, as well as a great designer and somebody I respect, so I like having one of his pieces around. Um, next up, Brad Southern Knives. Uh, this is a mini talk. And this guy has stuck around for a couple of reasons. A, um, it is very, very nice. It has a great action, etc. It's got a great blade. It slices beautifully. Actually, uh, in my original review, I kind of mentioned that the detent on it wasn't what I'd hoped for. I sent it back to Brad, and uh, he fixed the detent, and now it's like, oh my god, yes. This is one of the better flippers. Uh, this may be the best flipper in my collection in terms of just, like, the detent is just dialed in, and it's just, it's a great little compact piece. I, I Every time I carry this guy, it's just like, yeah, that's good. I'm a big big, big fan of this particular knife, and so it sticks around because it's got this incredible flipping action, this incredible lightweight, and I, this is just a really good example of what a, a, a small maker production knife can be. Um, then I've got a, a pair of TRM Adams. Um, this is uh, one I've got wearing a pair of Micata scales at the moment, and uh, here I have one wearing a pair of uh, Packerwood style rose, you know, I don't know, fake wood style scales. One of them has a polished blade, as you can see here. The other one absolutely does not. Um, these guys are amazing. Um, the, 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 there's a reason that this was my knife of the year last year. Um, because it's thin, it's slicey, and it's a great all-arounder. If I'm just going to be doing something and I don't know exactly what that something's going to look like, I don't think it's going to have a whole lot of hard use. The Atoms are an amazing choice. Um, and frankly, I like having the option to have a couple of different scales around quickly. Could I get by with one? Yeah. If I get another one, uh, maybe the titanium one, I'll probably get another one. But still, and I actually have a couple of other scale options down here. I've got a uh, flat carbon fiber, uh, if I ever wanted to go that route. But nonetheless, the atoms are amazing. I also have right here the uh, neutron, which is the smaller version of the atom. In fact, it's kind of the original. The neutron predated the atom. Uh, and uh, the neutron is great. I'm looking forward to. They've been teasing an a or a neutron too, or something like that. I don't know if it's a neutron or what. But it's, uh, this is another great, thin, slicey little knife, and this one actually is at a size range I like a little bit more. I think if they can do things that they've done from the atom, thinning that edge just a little tiny bit more, maybe using the, the, the same atom clip um, and giving the, the, the uh, inlaid liners, that this could be even, that could be even better. But the Neutron itself was a knife of the year at one point, too. Okay, North Arm Knives Skaha. This is uh, a knife that is, and this is a carbon fiber version. Um, I got one of the carbon fiber ones actually after a buddy of mine, uh, I think a Patreon patron, uh, decided his name came up in the books and he wasn't able to do it at that moment. He said, hey, Nick, do you want mine? I'm like, yes, because I've been meaning to try the carbon fiber and I'm glad I did, honestly. Um, and by, by the way, sorry if I'm resting my arm way over here. It's just like, oh, I'm just getting tired. I'm a wimp and such, right? Uh, <laughs> I've never worked a day in your life. Anyways, I'm sorry. I, I'm predating the comment or uh, preempting the comment is, the, uh, the the S35VN on this guy is beautifully done. The blade itself is super duper thin behind the edge. It is an amazing everyday carry choice, and the carbon fiber just makes it feel a little bit more premium. It's well done carbon fiber. This is a knife that doesn't get a whole lot of pocket time, largely because it is uh, relatively shallow carry and relatively thick in the pocket, but it does get in the pocket every so often, and I love it when it does. CKF, uh, this is the 520, uh, Philippe Georget uh, collaboration. This one's got the, the marble carbon fiber, the Zerk bolsters. This is an amazing piece just in terms of construction. It's got an amazing drop shot action, great front, ah, front flipping, great thin blade, thin edge. This is an absolutely stellar knife, and it's actually uh, not as limited edition as I thought it was when they started. They keep dropping more of these. I think CKF has realized, wait a second, if I keep making more of these amazing knives that I keep that we're making, we can print money. Let's do that, and that's great. Um, and so I'm really uh, happy to see them making more of those guys. And so you know the the Skaha sticks around. I, I keep forgetting the theme there. The Skaha sticks around because of that action, because it's a knife I love to recommend, even if they're a little hard to get. This guy sticks around for just technical excellence and because I really like Georget as a maker. Um, his custom stuff is out of reach for me. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're going on the secondary market crazy, basically, is what they're going. It's going to give you a number, but crazy, I think, is the proper term. Um, so the CKF version is sort of next best, and it is a really impressive knife in and of itself. We have, of course, the uh, Spyderco Nirvana, but this is a Razor Edge Knives Regrind. This is around in my collection for a few reasons. A, to start with, it is actually the only integral knife in my collection at the moment. 
I may be lying to you, but at the, I, I, I don't think I am. I think this is the only knife that is an integral, where the handle is one piece of titanium here. Um, but the most important thing about this is the regrind of the blade. This was done by Josh at Razor Edge Knives. He's no longer doing regrinds. He's doing reblades, creating whole new blades for knives. But um, he uh, did an amazing work here, turning a, a knife that had a blade that was very kind of... Eh, it was dark blasted and whatnot into a super thin slicing beast. Um, I love this knife. It also has some sentimental value to me because uh, not only was this originally commissioned by a good friend of mine, uh, my buddy Jim, then it went to my buddy Sid, uh, who is also an amazing supporter of the channel, and then it came to me. So it's been owned by two good friends and two great supporters of the channel, and this was my only kitchen knife for uh, three weeks when I moved to San Diego because of a moving mix-up. So it's got a lot of sentimentality. That one's not going anywhere. And by the way, this is an aftermarket clip. I believe this is an MXG gear, but it might be a Lynch. No, I think this is MXG. Anyways, um, I've got Casey Lynch clips around too. Grimsmo Norseman. Um, this is actually Norseman number uh, 821. One of the earlier ones, relative, I think they're up to 35, 3600 now. Um, it has a slightly softer detent than some of the new ones, which I prefer. And frankly, uh, this one's got some sentimentality. This used to be gold, actually. Um, this, this knife was a gold knife uh, up until I sent it over to EDC Gear House. I think they're way of knife MI now these days. But anyways, um, a really good modder in the community and uh, had him do it, uh, turn it blue. And just because I like the blue a little more than I like the gold. And I've got this little guy right here, which is a uh, the, the, the Grimsmo Knives coin. Uh, this was actually given to me at Blade Show 2019 by Sky, who is one of the Grimsmo Knives team and is in and of himself a great guy. Um, he's a Patreon patron and it, frankly, he's just... He's just awesome. Uh, and so, you know, that's not for sale, never will be. It says it on the side of it. But nonetheless, it's it's a great little piece, and it's a reminder that Sky is awesome, independently, completely of the Grimsmos, right? Um, so there's that. Alamic Knives Whippersnapper. Uh, oh, and the Norseman sticks around because, oh my God, that action, right? As well as the, um, just the drop shot or two. Whipsnap. Whipsnap is a really nice piece. This is a great little knife in so many ways. Not only is it a, is it a good cutter, I mean, you can see that this guy gets pocket time. He's been carried. He's been used. Um, but I love the entropic inlay here. I love the fact that this is just, the, the clip on it is awesome. The, the action on it is great. This knife is just so damn good. I, I like the whippersnapper a lot. And frankly, it's just, and it fits ergonomically in my hand beautifully. I, I can't even begin to tell you how much I like the freaking whip. Um, it, it's, it's quite, quite nice. And so the whippersnapper is sticking around just because it's a good size range. A little bit more than the busco, which I'll actually start showing off as the next one here. This is a full entropic with acid rain pattern busca from a Lamic as well as a, um, the, 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 I forget exactly the, but it's a tight weave damasteel pattern on both the blade there and the clip. I've thinned out the blade a little bit uh, with some aggressive sharpening, but nonetheless, um, the uh, but the whip snap is just awesome and gets a little bit more pocket time than the busker. The busker is a great knife too, and in fact, it was a knife of the year at one point in time. Um, this is the, uh, the the Semper blade, or is it? No, this is the Lago. I had the Semper. My original busker actually got stolen from me uh, out of uh, out of my pocket in Vegas, oddly enough. Um, but nonetheless, the, 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 this guy is uh, the, sort of the replacement busker in my collection. I saw the, the damn steel and it's just like, yeah, that's nice. And so the whip snap sticks around because it's excellent. The busker is, it's a reference point. It's a knife of the year kind of thing. Honestly, if I'm going to carry one of these, it's going to be the whip snap at this point, but the busker remains an amazing piece. This right here is a, a Knife Nuts Podcast Edition Shop by Design Void. Um, I got this guy because I'm a patron of the Knife Nuts Podcast. And by the way, if you don't listen to that podcast, you should. Uh, one of the participants is actually the maker of this, Brian the Doe. But uh, they put these guys up for listing for patrons early. And this is one of the best knives I own. Um, one of the reasons this sticks around is because I like Brian the Doe. I respect Brian the Doe a great deal as, a, as an artist, right? He's an incredible uh, maker and does some great work, and especially with his flipper tabs. Sorry, Brian. Um, but it has a nice flipper tab. It has a nice form factor. Also, it has amazing Damascus. I'll see if I can kind of zoom this in, give my right arm a little bit of a break there. But look at this freaking Damascus on there. That's great, and it's inlaid on both sides. It's just a beautifully smooth action. Like, technically speaking, this is, and plus it's got this hand satiny sort of finish, this is one of the best knives I own. A hundred percent, both in terms of overall construction as and in terms of just, like, materials and excellence. I... 
yeah, I like this guy a lot. Um, I wish that they were available in this. Frankly, I wish that they were available generally uh, more often. They, they, apparently, more were coming, but or more are coming. But still, um, this is one of the the relatively few Nado. Uh, well, this is the only Nado I own at the moment because the void is so damn good, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to get one of his customs at some point, I think. Um, this is a uh, Spydeco... Oh, Spydeco Sabenza. Wow, that's... Uh, <laughs> okay, anyways, back at the ranch. Uh, Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza. This is the Doppler edition, which makes sense because I do acoustics. Uh, and this is a very nice knife. It is a point of reference for the channel, 100%. doesn't make it into the pocket that often. Honestly, on a day that I would grab the Sabenza, uh, these days I would likely grab the uh, Quiet Carry Waypoint uh, or perhaps the uh, Neutron or something like that. Um, but at the same time, it is a great piece, and it's one that I definitely want to have around for the channel. And so this guy sticks around as a point of reference. Chris Reeve Knives Mundy. This is the carbon fiber one that was gifted to me by my viewers. When that busker, the original busker there, was lost, uh, the uh, a group of patrons, uh, well, not just patrons, actually, but viewers, um, Spade Knife Works, Dr. Frankie, a couple of other folks, well, a bunch of other folks, actually pulled money together, like, without my knowledge, and got that for me. So this is a knife that was given to me directly by my viewers. And as a result, this knife has a special symbolism to me, and it will never be sold. Um, it, you know, I... I barring like catastrophic something uh, even then i really that would hurt to sell um this is on the order of the knife i carried on my wedding day safe in my collection just because it's it's evidence of the people who support me and who like my work and who like my channel right um i uh, yeah this is amazing and it's a knife that gets carried on a lot of special days what i mean by that is on a day and this is dumb but on a day when i feel like you know oh this is going to be a tough day or a day that i feel like oh this is an important day in my life you know signing mortgage paperwork this guy was in my freaking pocket you know first day of my new job when i came out of here this guy was in my pocket right um it is a an important knife to me in that way and so it kind of symbolizes the the the, the, the I don't know, the, the love of my viewers, that's weird and pretentious, oh boy. Okay, let's break the pretense down a little bit with the Bee Hunter. Oh yeah, um, in case you were feeling like the collection was a little classy, my patrons have the solution for you. But this is another knife that is not going anywhere. This is a Benchmade Barrage. Um, it is from the Benchmade Custom Shop. It is in full M4 uh, steel. It is custom engraved. Uh, the Bee Hunter is uh, a knife that is in my collection. <laughs> but basically what happened is a bunch of my patrons got together and had the crazy idea to use the pay, the, to troll me with money, which is basically what my Patreon exists to do, um, by using the Benchmade Customizer to create this. And even though it is not a... Um, aesthetically perhaps the knife I would want to carry on a regular basis. The Barrage is a really nice knife. It, I mean, it's half serrated. Look at how effective these people are at trolling me. Um, but nonetheless, it remains an important part of my collection emotionally, and I'll be honest with you, it jumps into my pocket on occasion. Especially if I'm doing something a little, you know, like around the house, beatery sort of thing, I'll just reach in and grab this guy, because there's nothing I can do that will hurt this knife that will not make it more special, which is a weird thing. Um, and by the way, you can use whatever definition of special you would like for that one. Speaking of special, Spider Coast Leash Bowie. This is one of my very favorite knives. This is a knife that will always be uh, around my collection because um, this is part of the reason I started the channel. I've told this story before, but when I first started my YouTube channel, actually, it was because I was about to sell my original Sleash Bowie, which was one of the dumbest things I've ever done. That knife and I have got uh, we had a lot of history. That was a knife that got me through a lot of grad school, actually. Uh, well, at least a good part of it, right? Uh, just because it was like I, I stopped collecting when I got the buoy, right? Uh, so it's an amazing pocket knife, and um, it sort of kicked off the channel because I wanted to do the review because, like, this is amazing. People should buy one. They shouldn't sell it, even though I was dumb, and I was thinking, oh, I'm in an area with three point, a three inch law. I can't carry it anymore. Yeah, anyways. So the buoy is around. That said, take a look at this knife. This is not a $500 knife. 
This is not a $600 knife. This is not a $700, $800, $900, $1,000 knife. Frankly, this is a knife that is maxing out around $425. Past that point, you can do better. You can do absolutely better. Do not support the parasites on eBay who are selling these for a million freaking dollars. It is not worth it. They are amazing knives, but they are not that amazing. Um, I, I sincerely, sincerely hope that something causes that market to just drop out completely because I would love seeing those eBay parasites out a little bit. That's terrible and a little sadistic, but guys, come on. They're, they're daily tools. Don't keep people behind, you know, don't, don't screw people over. Okay, um, this is the Oz Knives Roosevelt. Um, this guy is a custom configuration with a little bit of Timascus in there. Um, actually, a good buddy of mine, uh, again, was in a situation where he got one. Uh, he was on the books for a long time, and then when his slot came up, uh, he didn't want to go there, and so he passed his book spot on to me, which is great. So I got the custom make this guy. Maker is super nice. Um, action is amazing. Really good utility. LC 200 end blade. This guy sticks around, at least for the moment, because it's not only very attractive, but it's a really nice utilitarian little knife there. So I like the Oz a, a great deal. It's a really nice piece, and uh, although production isn't very high, it is quite good. I uh, already talked about the Neutron. This is the Gerber 9. Knives Fastball. And the Gerber Knives Fastball is a fine little knife. Um, you know, it's doing quite well for Gerber, and I think it, as it should. It's got a lot going for it. Um, but at the same time, this particular one is the one that I made at the Gerber factory uh, when I did that factory tour. So this guy sticks around for emotional reasons. I look down at this and I'm like, yeah, I remember standing in the Gerber factory with the designer of the knife right there, putting this guy together. Is that, you know, shrewd marketing? I don't know. But at the same time, by God, it's a cool piece. Um, and so it, it brings me joy just to remember that experience, which is one of the unique things that I've gotten to do as a result of this YouTube channel, right? I love touring makers, uh, you know, and the ProTech Sprint, actually. The genesis of this was I visited ProTech, and I they, they showed me some of these Ultimate Customs, and it was just like, oh my god, these are amazing. You tell me when you do sprints. And then a little while later, they told me, you know, I paid them, and oh boy, am I happy about that. So that's the reason this sticks around, is because of that emotional uh, interest, right? Um, uh, This is the Sprint. Spyderco S9DV and Carbon Fiber Native. Um, this is one of the very best knives that Spyderco makes. At the time I reviewed it, I, A, I owned it for, it was sent to me by Spyderco, so it was earmarked for charity, and B, I, I don't know, I, I didn't give it as much praise as it deserves, but this is an amazing piece, and recently I, I just, every time I saw one come up, it was just like, oh, that was good. That was really good, and because it's lightweight, it's it's just truly excellent. This is one of the best knives Spyderco makes, and so I, I was tired of not owning one, and so I ended up owning one, right? Um, and so, yeah, there's that. Protec knives, speaking of Protec, Malibu. This is a fancy Malibu here with a Damascus blade and a blue handle. I think this blue handle is going to get turned uh, gray, actually, before too long here, just because I think that look a little better with the Damascus, but um, with a mother of pearl button and whatnot, um, hey, this is a great knife. The Malibu itself is excellent. Um, great action, very quiet. I like this in the reverse Tonto blade. Is just excellent. So, uh, you know, this was one, you know, Protec sent me a, um, a plain Jane model, uh, plain Jane, he says, of a $200 knife. Uh, they sent me this guy originally, uh, which is from my review, and I did touch up that little ding, whoops. Um, and, you know, I was like, I like this a lot, and then I saw those, and I messaged the Protec guy, I said, hey, are those available? They said, yeah, here's the price. I said, yes, thank you very much, and I ended up with one. It's, it's, it's absolutely, yeah, the Malibu's one of the best things they've ever made. Um, and absolutely a strong contender for Knife of the Year. Uh, speaking of which, Quiet Gary Waypoint, a uh, great, great piece. Oh my God, yes, 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 yes. Yes, um, fully uh, rust-proof completely. It is a Vanax blade. This is the only Vanax uh, super clean blade I've got in my collection at the moment. Um, it has a uh, very, very nice set of titanium scales here. It is just uh, good in the pocket, has a beautiful flicky action. There is nothing particularly wrong with this knife. Um, and so this guy sticks in the collection because it's fully rust-proof and because, oh my God, is it good. Um, this is a knife I've been recommending to everybody who will listen for a little while now. And so there's that. Speaking of really great knives, and actually novel knives, this is the uh, Monterey Bay Knives EWC, Everywhere Carry. Yeah. 
Um, this is a slip joint. There is no lock to it. I'm not doing anything to unlock. It's a double detent slip joint. Watch the full video. But it's not only a unique mechanism that's super addictive and flicky, but it's also a knife with a great steel, a great, great, great thin edge. Um, it's a great cutting tool. It's a nice size. This is, it's super lightweight. Yeah, this is a knife that I recently had on loan. Actually, last time I did one of these videos to uh, a buddy of mine, um, to Average Joe, or Average Bros Watch Reviews, that is. And uh, I missed it. And so when I got it back, very happy to have it. This is the uh, Sandrine Knives. Um, oh, come on. The name of this is evading me again. Um, it is an Italian name. It is... Um, I want to say Castellano, but that's Spain. Uh, yeah, it's going to come to me. It's going to come to me. But this is a uh, full tungsten carbide blade. This is not steel. This is tungsten carbide. And so as a result, uh, and you can see right there, the phone I am filming this on. But anyways, um, as a result, it is uh, very, very, so the Lanza, the Delatore. So this is the Delatore, and I also have a Lanza, which actually lives downstairs um, by the incoming mailbox because it gets a lot of box opening duty, especially from my wife, who likes that model because she can pinch it open with her longer nails very easily. But anyways, this is a great pocket knife, and it's a tungsten carbide blade, and it's super thin and light. This merits... Uh, a place in my collection very easily, if nothing else, for the tungsten carbide, but it's also just a great pocket knife. Um, this is the Benchmade Knives um, Mini... Uh, uh Oh, come on, mini bug out. Um, and I put a set of rogue blade work scales on this. Why this is in my collection, I've asked myself on a couple of occasions. It's a great knife, it really is. It's super lightweight, it's super small, compact. Um, I don't know that this is going to be sticking around, uh, particularly, but it is definitely a really nice piece, and it's one of the nicer things Benchmade's doing lately. Um, the mini bug out, that is. So, you know, I, I like it. Um, and, you know... But yeah, anyways, so that's the mini bug out there. And then, of course, uh, there is the original Z Hunter, which I've taken out of the safe just for this particular instance um, with the missing stop pin and everything. Uh, if you don't know why the Z Hunter is in my collection, you, uh, you've not been watching the channel long enough, right? So that's my pocket knife. Oh, crap, that's right. There are two more drawers. I have a problem. Um, next down, I have this guy. Oh, God, this is going to be a gargantuan video. Um, so this is the uh, this is the knife I carried on my wedding day, a GC99 pattern with a uh, easy open notch that was actually added in by a buddy of mine, Toad Sticker, who was uh, formerly a YouTuber and, uh, the, you know, that hadn't been around lately. Still a great guy. This is an H... Oh, and so it's my wedding knife. It's going to freaking stick around, right? Uh, HEA Designs Falcon. This is a cool little piece, and I'm actually going to send this off to uh, EDC Gear House to get it modded around. Um, I don't know what whether I'm going to keep on, uh, hold on to it or not. Um, it may go into a charitable giveaway or something like that at a later point in time. But uh, nonetheless, there's there. This is an FK5 by Hiroaki Ota, uh, O-H-T-A. Um, it is a friction folder knife. It was given to me by uh, my buddy Chris, who you may recognize as one of the bigger trolls of my channel. Um, but in, in the very best of ways, it's a cute little... Oh, I'm sorry, I have another integral. There's this guy, and then there's the Nirvana. This is a wood integral, slightly different, but still. A great little knife, and a nice reminder that some traditional knife, you know, traditional can be great, right? And then this is a um, Benchmade Knives proper. It's uh, number 137, and was a gift from a good friend uh, who has an affinity for the 137 number. Uh, and I like the S90V version uh, of the proper, and like I said, it's given to me by a buddy, so it's there. Of course, the very best knives in my collection are these uh, Nick Shabazz Edition Victorinoxes, uh, available at Blade HQ, or at least they have been available. Hopefully, they'll be restocked soon. And then uh, one of the cuter knives in my collection is the Birdshot IV model uh, from the, my buddies over at the Birdshot IV channel. Um, they did just such good work with that. That, that, that that's amazing uh that's not knives this is not knives either okay um next up penny knives is uh front flipper zulu um i had the front flipper trapper as well but i ended up i have the custom so i didn't need that so i've got the zulu around amazing knife um if these were more available they would be a, a strong contender for, for knife of any year i mean they're just so damn good spydeco dragonfly this is a great travel option it's relatively legal it's relatively lightweight it's relatively cheap um uh, yeah this is this is a, a wonderful little piece here i can't complain with that um this is the protect knives magic uh california legal edition i sure do wish in some ways and i put a little bit of an edge on it uh, i sure do wish that i could carry a full size but welcome to california uh but they went on ahead and they um 
uh, lit the bat signal for this one. So I, I'm I'm deeply amused by that. But yeah, this is just a uh, the the Protec Magic's a neat design, and the Cali Legal version is uh, unique in its own little way. Uh, I can't say it gets that much pocket time when I've got other pieces out there, but it's still, especially with the bat, yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, this is my Spyderco um, Para Three uh, lightweight, uh, which I Frankenstein to have a Maximet blade from a regular Para Three. Um, this is just the Para Three lightweight, kind of a token knife in my collection. It's great. It's a really solid knife. Um, but I can't say it's going to be, uh, this isn't the, the, the most sticking powery thing ever. It's more a point of reference than anything. Um, and especially now that I have gotten this guy, which is a Spydeco Delica 4, uh, which is in my pocket at the moment, uh, which is in uh, K390 steel. You can see that it is starting to patina already. It is not a stainless steel, um, but nonetheless, it is a nice knife and it is a good steel um, and it, it should be a beast. So, uh, and it's got perfect fit and finish and whatnot. So that, that that's good. Spydeco Chaparral FRN. I recommend this knife so damn much. It's a really good knife. It's a really good travel choice, along with the da uh, Dragonfly Super Thin Slicey Blade. There, there, there's no reason not to have one of these in the collection. I might have done a Sun and the Moon version, but I got lots of other fancy knives, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I just showed off the Delica. I have showed off the Dragonfly. Benchmade 940. Uh, again, this is a piece that is partly in my collection for nostalgia reasons. Um, actually, the 940 is one of the f first kind of higher-end pieces I ended up getting. Uh, actually, dumb enough, I bought one um i found a hardware store locally that had one for 125 bucks back in this would have been 2010 2009 something like that um and then shortly before benchmade did map jacked all their prices through the roof but then i returned it because i realized that i had a local policy that forbade anything over three inches but then that policy changed like two months afterwards and then they'd gone up in price and so i i yeah, 940 is a great knife. I've got some memories with it. Um, is it one that I carry regularly? No, not necessarily. More of a point of reference, and it is sort of the prototypical Benchmade, but still, there's that. I have a uh, Benchmade, or a Benchmade, good God. The hole is right there, Nick. This is not a Benchmade. A Spyderco H1 uh, Ladybug, or I forget the name of this guy, but it is a, a Ladybug-style knife in H1 steel. Uh, which will never rust. And then I've got this little guy, which is a man bug, uh, right here, uh, 07, uh, 17V, collector's edition. And then I have a ladybug. Uh, this is a HAP 41 that I have dyed black. I have a ladybug, which is a part of a good friend's collection. So this guy absolutely sticks around. So there's that. I have... Um, oh, God. This is the Z Hunter I had to carry for... I have two Z Hunters in my... Oh, oh, God, what's wrong with me? So many things. Uh, this is a, a Z Hunter. This is the one that I actually carried uh, for the uh, for a week, basically, um, for uh, my Patreon patrons. Again, the torture with the money thing. But uh, this will always have a fond place in my heart, mostly because, and by the way, this happened in the case after I carried it not during the process. This is a knife that's been slowly decomposing, um, which, frankly, is on brand. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that one lives there. Uh, next up, we have the Concept Knives Shy. Concept is a relatively new brand, actually. Um, they, they are, uh, they, they were founded by a couple of folks from Kaiser, but they've been really kind of cranking out some nice pieces. I've got the Shard in my collection, and I probably will also have although I haven't done the review of it yet, um, but I, I'm actually quite impressed with this little guy right here. This is the uh, the Gremlin. This is another concept knife, um, but nonetheless, concept is a, a, a brand that's got a lot of former Kaiser people involved, but they're doing really nice stuff, and the price on them is is quite reasonable. This is a, a and it's frankly, it's a nice design. It's got a very glassy action, um, very smooth action. It's It's just gotten better with use. I'm pretty impressed with this little piece right here. I mean, it's a nice example of Timascus, too. Uh, although it's not the nicest Timascus ever. I mean, if we put it up next to, like, for instance, the... Um yeah, you can tell there is variation, but still, um, it's a neat little piece, and it definitely is sticking around just because it's a relatively new brand, and it's one that I think is doing some nice work. Theron Forge Archbishop, um, this guy is the, um, it's their pro line. Pro Series or whatever the heck it is. The one made by Wii, but actually the reason this guy's sticking around is not only because it's great design, and the Archbishop is kind of a, it's a knife I reviewed early on in the history of the channel, right? Um, but also a good buddy of mine has uh, a matching knife. Um, and so as a result, this kind of just sticks around for sentimental reasons. Booze Blade Smoke, great knife. 
impossible to get, um, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, but still a great knife. And uh, this is one of the earlier knives that I stealth reviewed. Uh, and so as a result, uh, I th there will always be a little affinity there. This is an Ontario Rat Number no. 2 in D2 Steel, um, but it has been made by EDC Gearhouse slash Way of Knife. Um, and there you can see they put my logo on it and being a little bit, yeah, there's their logo there, um, uh, being a little bit of a sucker. And it, with the higher end titanium scales, I, I just, I like the piece. Um, and it's a nice example of dressing up a, a lower uh, lower price piece. This is a uh, Spydeco smock. I have actually filed out the finger choil a little bit to uh, and get rid of some of that beard and taken out the second attempt just because it you know runs a little nicer there. But um, a great piece. Uh, like the smock a lot. Um, and it's also the it, this is by the way the knife joy version with the smooth G10, um, which is is quite good. Um, and the, the, the 20 CV blade. Yeah, this. Is a solid little piece here. Um, and so I, I like, and it's an example of the smart compression lock, uh, which I think is a great design, even if, uh, yeah, so there's that. This is a pair of knives. The um, These are mostly around for recommendation. The Doug Ritter uh, RSK Mark One G2 Mini and Full Size, I think are the full titles for them. It's just the Hulk Ritter, right? Um, but I like the Mini one for everyday carry. Um, it's probably not going to get that much pocket time, given what else I've got in the pocket. But these are definitely good points of comparison. I'm recommending them all damn day, every day. Buck 110 is not just a knife, it's a culture. And this is my way of showing homage to that culture. Um, it's definitely a thing. Is this ever going to slip into my pocket? No, but it's the Buck 110, so I'm going to have to have one, right? Or Uncle Randy will hunt me down and kill me. Um, this is the CRKT shot. <laughs> Okay, D uh, don't mind the smiley face, I that, that uh, or this frowny face. That's uh, for a for a review uh, that has, has. I don't think it'll have aired yet by this time, but yeah, um, the, the shocky will make an appearance here. But it's the cricket shock, right? It's a big, ridiculous freaking knife. It's a it's sort of a a historical piece, if you will, uh, when cricket went a little bit crazy and went high end. Um, a, is there a good reason for me to own this? Absolutely not. But at the same time, it, every time I handle it, it makes me laugh. And so that's a win, right? Uh, oh, and then I forgot in the very back here, speaking of things that make me laugh, <laughs> cold steel thigh light grits. Oh, yeah. The Lynn Thompson edition. This is the knife that I take out when people are like, oh, my God, that, that thing is murdery. Like, no, actually, this is... This is worse. Um, this is completely freaking nuts, but at the same time, kind of a joy. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with that for a, a video, but it's going to be beautiful once I get there. Um, and then I've got a couple of other pieces that are um, sort of... Actually, here, I can scroll down a little bit here. Scroll down, point down a little bit here. Uh, yeah, this will kind of show you some of the other stuff that's down here. This is a CRKT home front. This actually came to my table from a viewer for a Terrible Knives Live, but I've gotten it running great. Um, they, they actually had it running pretty good, too, but a little bit of cleanup, a little bit. And so this actually turns out to be a very good functional knife, right? Uh, so we, that, that's sticking around. This is a facsimile of the very first knife I ever owned, a Cub Scout knife. Um, and Cub Scouts, for those of you unfamiliar, is the, uh, it's sort of a, a, a small bear, or uh, a small bear scout. Wow. A small boy scout. Um, bear scouts is probably a different thing. Uh, but Cub Scouts are, uh, the, I was a scout way back when. I left the scouting tradition after I got moved to another school that didn't have scouting. Um, but nonetheless, it's a, um, uh, so I never became a full-on boy scout. Not taking that credit here. Not stealing the Eagle Valor. But this was the very first pocket knife I ever got. Um, it's not good, mind you, and this isn't the exact one. Uh, that one was lost to the sands of time, but nonetheless, it's a nice piece. Um, here is an Ontario Rat number two that I have around. In fact, the original one, um, the one I have on my table for size comparison right now, actually was a gift from a viewer, uh, and it has on the back side of it, which you never really see, Nick Shabazz keep on cutting, and that makes me laugh, so I have it around. Um, so there is that. I have the open L's. I have one in carbone and one in the inoxy Dibler steel. Sorry, French speakers. I know you probably just died. Uh, my apologies there. I have a Kershaw dividend that was sent to me from House of Blades, um, actually as a thank you for doing the... Um, Retail a showcase video. Um, I will find a way to do something beautiful with this, but um, they, they went ahead and engraved it, so I was not going to say no to that. This was sent to me by my loving mother, who was uh, on uh, vacation in Newport, Rhode Island at one point in time. Found this in a store. She is aware that it is a terrible knife. That is why 
why she sent it to me. And oh boy, is it ever. But uh, nonetheless, there's that. This is the, <laughs> every so often I will get a message from somebody. Oh my God, Nick, did you know about the zombie Nick brand of knives? Is that you? No, it's not. Um, uh, with the charming logo uh, uh, slogan, friends don't let friends eat friends. But this is a, um, this is one of theirs. And it was actually sent to me very early on by a viewer who had it engraved. This is the zombie Nick Chavez. Nice. This is a old Kaiser, very old Kaiser, like early, early days Kaiser. Um, this has tip down only carry. Uh, it has a uh, proprietary pivot. That means I can't actually get rid of the blade play on it. Um, some people, oh, you can put an Allen key in there. Not on this one. Um, and it's it's the, the, the terrible detent, etc. But you know what? It, it, it was uh, given to me actually by Reddit Knife Swap. Uh, and this was my very first flip of frame lock. There's this, uh, this situation right here. Um, this was uh, a gift from Spade Knife Works, um, who is both a friend and a troll of the channel and simultaneously. Uh, and so I appreciate that, Spadey. This was a, uh, th this was given to me by a, an another good friend, a uh, patron, Brooke. Um, and she went to town with a laser engraver on it. Uh, do not get into watches, written right here. On the top, the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Right here, we have the channel logo and not a brilliant man. And then right over the flip a tab, right there, you can see the gem. Um, so this is a Civivi Exarch, uh, and is a very cool little piece, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, this was, again, sent to me, uh, by a viewer, and then this is a, um, a, a peanut, uh, Maritak peanut lighter. It's probably out of juice at the moment, come to think of it. Yeah. Either way, um, that, that I've mostly just got around, because I I don't even know how that guy came to me. Um, I have a few other items around, a few other knives around, but by and large, they are fixed blades. So I've got, for instance, the Spyderco South Lesser Respect Bowie. I have this guy here, which is a beautiful Damascus knife um, by a guy named Micho, uh, a Polish guy, absolutely gorgeous knife here. Um, and so you can see my full review of that guy, but this is stuck around. Uh, what else is out there? Uh, da, 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 da. I've got a Bradford Guardian knife. I've got a couple of Mora knives around. And then I've got those other pieces that I talked about as being mostly for uh, comparison, right? Um, and so uh, th those are uh, those are the other guys that I think I've got around. There's probably a couple of others drifting about. My wife has some knives of her own. Um, but I, yeah, I think that about covers it. So now let's go into pens. Uh, sure, get into pens. Um, in my pen case here, I have a big selection. I've got a Twisby Eco pen right here, which is one of the best inexpensive fountain pens out there. This is a, uh, a beautiful little pen uh, that was given to me by a friend here, a little Pelican Rollerball. Uh, the Fisher Space Pen, there is no reason to have this except for size comparison. I don't love the Space Pen cartridge. This is the pen that's probably spent most time in my pocket, right? This is a Machine Era Classic um, uh, uh, pen here it's uh, it's amazing um this is a big click stick pen for size comparison as is the pilot g2 right here as well as a pen that i stole from the hampton inn sorry about that hampton inn um next up we have a uh, tactile turn copper side click really really nice little piece um just uh yeah uh, absolutely excellent and a one that i'm recommending a lot of folks to so that's good the pocket jotter which, by the way, um, is pronounced by most people as Parker Jotter. Um, yeah, nice pen. Um, uh, really good budget option. A uh, tactile turn uh, bolt action pen. Also quite excellent here. I have a refined bolt action pen, uh, which is not perfect, but it's refined. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so that's there. And all of these guys are uh, both carried on occasion as well as just being really nice pieces here. Um, and then what is in my pocket at the moment I have, oh, I also have this guy here, which is a, uh, this is a Schoen design pen, um, S-C-H-O-N. Uh, it's a pocket fountain pen with a faceted, and this is not, by the way, hammered. This is machined. It's neat. It's really neat. It's pricey, but it's really neat. Uh, it, it turned into a big fan with a stub nib in there. Oh, yeah. So this has been a really common resident in my pocket. This one's been living on my table for a while for review. 
but it's it's definitely that, that that's happening. Flashlight wise, what do I have here? I have uh da, 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 da. the moment I have a through night D2, I'll find a home for this guy at some point in time. But that's a solid piece. The uh through night neutron 2C. This is the the light that I recommend to most people on a regular basis, just because it's a it's a really nice light. It's got good features, it's got good, it's just it's great. So these guys live in my pack regularly. I have a um uh, uh, Olight I1R, I think, I2R, I1R EOS, little guy, they engraved my name on it, so it's stuck around right, um, I have a, um, EGTAC D25A, uh, in the titanium version, um, great little light, um, I don't carry it as often as, just because these kinds of pocket lights aren't often what I'm doing these days, um, but it's good, this is the EGTAC, or I'm sorry, EGTAC, this is the Jetbeam RRT01, this is a rotary light, so the, the light is actually controlled by rotating this ring. This is the best user interface for a flashlight, period. Um, and I don't know why more people don't do it. Um, oh, wait, I do. It's because people are weird, right? Um, I have actually two other flashlights that have just showed up on my table. Um, where the heck is the other one? Must be in the other room. Oh, no, here it is. This is the... Um, uh, oh, come off it. Lumen Top... Uh, Oh, good God. It's the Lumen Top. Hold on, I got the, 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 the thing over here, right? All the flashlight people are shouting, it's the FW4A! So I've got the FW4A right here. This is using the Anduril user interface. Uh, this is using the Chia light, uh, LEDs. So as you can see here, the color rendering is bonkers good. If we compare that to this guy, this versus... Oh, yeah. Uh, so I love the color rendering on this. I'm trying to get used to and the real firmware and see if I can get to a point where I like it. And then this is its big brother. This is the, um, uh, oh, I just said its name. Either way, uh, I think the D, DW21 is something like that. FW21. Um, either way, um, another nice light with a lot of lumens here, and these both come in at a good value. So I think this guy might end up sticking around just because of that Nichia bulb situation. But, uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, I think that's it for lights. That's a bunch of lactate because I'm tolerant to many things, but lactose is not among them. Uh, I've done that. I've got some multi-tools up in here. I've got my uh, Leatherman Charge TTI. Great, uh, great multi-tool, uh, but honestly, I wouldn't do the charge over the Wave at this point. Um, the Wave is better. This is a Wave Plus. Um, the, the, the Plus is the, the little uh, removable bolt cutter there, um, but this is a, a really great piece, and the Wave is what lives in my pack most of the time. Oh, and by the way, speaking of flashlights, the, the light that's in my pack most of the time, although it's kind of moot these days now that I'm stuck at home due to freaking Rona here, but the one that's been living in my pack for a while is this guy. It's the Nightcore TM10K. 10,000 lumens! Flashlight. Um, really, it's great. Um, it's freaking expensive. Uh, but it's it's really great. I'm a big, big fan of the TM10K here. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's this little guy right here. Um... And then I've got a Leatherman Squirt. This guy sticks around, and the TM10K sticks around because it puts around stupid amounts of light, right? Um, it just, it's ridiculous. This is the best multi-tool ever, so there's a thing. This is a, um, a straight razor, uh, which I will use to shave on occasion. Uh, this is uh, my very first knife, actually, that I purchased in, the, like, of the things that I have purchased in my lifetime. This is the oldest purchase I have. This is a credit card companion. This is a terrible knife. It's made out of some kind of surgical stainless uh, amalgam. Uh, it, terrible, terrible, terrible. But it is, uh, you know, it's the oldest thing I own. I've been a gear geek forever, right? I was the kid staring at the, the gadgets in Shopper Image going, Oh my God, that looks amazing. I need a credit card companion. And I'm like, 10. Like, I don't have multi-tool issues, but here I'm wanting them. This is the Leatherman Squirt. This guy has been in my pocket probably more than anything else that you've seen today. Um, there was a period of many years where this was all I could carry. Uh, and as a result, this guy lived on my... But, you know, nonetheless, it's it's seen better days. I hand orange peeled the, uh, the finish here. But this, yeah, it, it, that's an amazing piece. And I've got some history with it there. The pens already. Knives were good. Lights. Okay. Now it's time to get into watches. Do not get into watches. Okay, we'll start off with the watch that's on my wrist. Uh, this is the uh, Omega Seamaster um, the Professional. This is a great dive watch. It's a great luxury watch. It's a great, uh, beautiful figured movement on this watch, too. 
Um, this is just gorgeous. Um, and so this brings a bunch of things to the table. It's a higher-end luxury piece, which, like it or not, unfortunately, there are people in the world who uh, won't watch a, a channel talking about watches if you have no evidence of knowing anything about luxury watches. So it's kind of a little bit of snob armor there, but uh, while being itself snobbish, it's also got a James Bond thing, which I'm going to be real here is a little bit of a thing for me. I, I definitely... Uh, that's a thing. I'm a Bond fan. Uh, and so having that on there is, is, it's not on there. This isn't one of the Bond editions. Pardon me, but it is a Bond watch. And so that's nice. And I'm a kid who grew up playing Goldeneye, right? So yeah, that's a thing. Uh, yeah. Um, next up is this little guy right here. This is the Casio Oceanus Cachalot or Cachalot or whatever the heck it is. This is a Casio dive watch. It is unfortunately about two grand. Um, it is pure titanium, uh, so it is very light, even though it is very thick, um, and it is kind of ridiculous. Um, this isn't going to stick around. I'm going to be real with you here. It's an amazing watch, uh, but it's not necessarily for me. It's I'm not a diver, and so I don't need a watch that makes a bunch of sacrifices to be an excellent dive watch, but it does things like telling you the local tide. Let's see here. The, 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 the tide at my local beach here in San Diego is... Oh, I screwed that up. Hold on. It'll tell us. At this very moment... The tide at my local beach is... Okay, it's rising. All right, tide's going up. Get out there and start surfing. What do you want the tide? You probably want the tide up. I don't know. I'm not a surfer, right? Um, on a much lower price, we have the Seiko Samurai. This is another big blue dive watch. Um, honestly, I have too many dive watches at this point in time. But um, at the same time, this is great. It's less expensive relative to a lot of them. Um, it's got a really nice bezel. It's one that I recommend on a pretty regular basis. Will this one stick around long term? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not, though, in the grand scheme. Seiko Alpinist, really nice piece. Um, again, will this stick around long term? Not 100% sure, uh, but uh, nonetheless, it's very good. It's got some nice features to it, and it's just something a little different in my collection. It's not another diver. It's not another really high-end fancy piece. It's just got its own little thing to it. The Alpinist is a great little watch. It could be my only. Casio Oceanis. Uh, this is the S5000T, I believe, or C. One of them. It's a great... Uh, whoa there. Sorry about the camera. Hit there. Great watch. 100% awesome watch with the little crystal in the background there. Offering a little bit of bling to it with a nice little rose gold accents. Really good. Really, really good. Good, 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 good. This guy is uh, the Builder Watch I did with the American Watch and Clock Institute. I put this movement together by hand, uh, which is a joy. It's not wound at the moment. It is a manual wind watch, but we can see it will come to life here. Yeah, that's how it's keeping time. So it is a mechanical watch that I myself assembled. As a result, it's got some sentimentality for it. Um, I've got it on a weird little shock mesh bracelet here, just because I don't have the, the watch itself didn't come with a bracelet. Um, and the watch itself is designed by Greg Stevens Design, as it says on the back there, which is a uh, he's a cool guy. Met him at uh, G10. This is the watch I wore on my wedding day, a uh, Quartz Casio, uh, Casio, good Lord, Omega, uh, slight difference there, Omega Seamaster. Um, it's an older generation. They're no longer making this model, but it is a great little watch. Uh, the loom on it is not that great, and, uh, you know, but, and the, the, the bracelet doesn't adjust all that much, so it's not something that gets a whole lot of wrist time, but it's still quite nice. And then, uh, then... Not the newest acquisition, that would be the Kachalit. But uh, then there's this guy. This is the Seiko Grand Seiko uh, SBGE001. This is a GMT watch. Um, so the third red hand there tells us what time it is at this point in Central European time. But um, it shows us, and this is a power reserve, how much time it can run. But this is unlike any of the other watches here. I've got some quartz, some mechanical. This is a hybrid of the two. It's a spring drive watch. Look at the hand. It's going around completely smoothly. That's because this, unlike the other watches, is not using a quartz movement where it steps the hand every second, like this. And it's not using a mechanical movement where it kind of circles around, but in little tiny jerks, like this. Instead, it's completely smooth. It's using a quartz timer to put the brakes, basically, on a mechanical movement really really awesome piece great finishing great just excellence and this strap by the way this is a uh, clasp actually made by christopher ward a different uh, watch company entirely and then the the strap itself was made by k h leather um who is the uh the, the person who does a lot of my leather work actually he made this wallet here which is uh, my my wallet it's a uh collie i believe 
the name of it. So anyways, um, and those are my watches. I've got a couple around for review, etc. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I'm lying to you here. Um, I've got a few others that are points of reference here. I've got the, uh, the, the Casio Royale here. I've got a Citizen... Um, uh, BM8180, this is a great travel watch, 100%, relatively inexpensive. I've got some, you know, an F91W, etc. But yeah, that's 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 the watch collection, and that's the gear collection overall. So, anyways, um, this has been, holy crap, an hour. I hope this has been interesting to you, most of all, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Bye now.